All right, early humans, part two. Let's do this for you. Here we go, here we go. All right, have your notes ready? We're looking at language. We found out the most valuable thing on the face of the earth is knowledge. Get all you can while you can. Get some knowledge. Here we go. Early people express themselves not only in words, but in what's the other way that we express ourselves. In art, and it comes to lots of forms and fashions, music, painting, sculpture, you name it. They crushed yellow, black, and red. What were they crushed? What needs to be crushed? Rocks, that's right. Don't get crushed in this class. To make powders for paint. Then they adapted these on cave walls, creating scenes of lions, oxen, panthers, and other animals. Historians are, check this out. This is fun because they're not sure why these cave paintings were created. So you're allowed to guess if you like. All right, here's some other guesses. They may have had, you think maybe they had religious meaning. Religious meaning. Well, let's pray to the oxen. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Early people also might have thought that painting an animal would bring good, you know, paint an animal on the wall. Maybe good luck before the hunt. Let's go hunting, guys. Go paint that elephant over there. So maybe we'll get one. I don't know. All right, the invention of tools. Check this out. Paleolithic people were the first to use. All right, they were the first to use this awesome word, technology. They use technology. They, they had computers, right? Back in the Paleolithic times, before they could write. No, technology is, is this. Watch, our, which are tools and methods to help humans perform tasks. Anything that makes our lives easier is technology. People often used a hard stone. Check this out. This is what they would use. They called, some of you used it before, flint to make tools. All right. By hitting flint with a hard stone, they can make it flake into pieces with very sharp edges. That's where you get the arrowheads and the axe heads and all this. To make at hand axes or hunting spears, they tied wooden poles to pieces of flint that were the right shape for the tool. Over time, early people grew more skilled at making tools. They got better and better and sharper and sharper. They crafted smaller and sharper tools, such as fish hooks and needles made from animal bones. And they used these needles to make nets and baskets and to sew hides together for clothing. All right, here comes our last topic. Neolithic times. We're leaving the Paleolithic and going into the Neolithic. Things are going to change rapidly. All right, after the last ice age ended, people began to change their way of life. They began to, what did they begin to do? Begin to do something to the, you know, the environment. Domesticate. They began to domesticate or tame animals and plants for human use. Animals provided milk, meat, and wool. They also carried goods and pulled carts. We call them beasts of burden because they were doing our work for us. Pretty nice, huh? In addition, people also learn how to, this is awesome, maybe, they could grow food. For the first time, people could stay in one place to grow grains and vegetables gradually. Farming began to, or well, that's not the word, but farming replaced hunting and gathering. This change in the way people lived marked the beginning of the infamous Neolithic Age. Dun, 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 dun. We should make it a movie. Neolithic Age. Coming soon to a theater near you. Or the New Stone Age. Or we could call it the Agricultural Revolution, which began about 8,000 BCE and lasted to about 4,000 BCE. All right. Why was farming so important? You're thinking, no, that's, that's not that important. But yeah, it's important. Watch this. Historians call the changes in the Neolithic age a farming revolution. The word revolution refers to changes that greatly affect many areas of life. Some historians consider the farming revolution the most important event in human history. Without farming, we have no food. All right, farming did not begin in one region and spread. People in, check this out, different parts of the world discovered how to grow crops on their own at the same time. In Asia, people grew wheat, barley, rice, soybeans, and grain, 
uh, called millet. In Mexico, farmers grew corn or maize, squash, and potatoes. In Africa, they grew millet and grain called sorghum. All right, and because now we have food, we have a growth of villages. People who farm could, all right, and I move around no more. You just settle down, boy. Girl, y'all need to settle down. Settle down in one place. We have plenty of food. We can do it. We can settle down. Herders remained nomadic, all right, and drove their animals wherever they could find a gra uh, grazing land. Farmers, however, had to stay close to their fields to water the plants, keep all those hungry animals out there away, and then to harvest their crops. They began to live in villages. What's your village like? That's right, where they built permanent homes and they stayed there year round. During that Neolithic age, villages were started in Europe, India, Egypt, China, and in Mexico. The earliest known communities have been found in the Middle East, and that's where we'll go after our first unit. One of the oldest is Jericho on the West Bank between what are now Israel and Jordan. This city dates back to about 8,000 BCE. Another well-known Neolithic community is Cattle Hayek in the present day Turkey. Little of it remains, but it was home to some 6,000 people between 6,700 BC, I should say E, and 5,700 BCE. They lived in simple mud brick houses that were packed tightly together and decorated inside with wall paintings. They used other buildings as places of, check this out, places of worship, oh, worship. along with farming, the people hunted, raised sheep and goats, and ate fish and birds from nearby marshes. All right, now, what's the benefits of settled life? All right, check this out. The shift to settled life brought Neela to people greater security, all right, than they had ever known before. A steady food supply meant healthy, growing populations. With a bigger population, there were more workers to produce a bigger crop because villagers produced more, more than enough to eat, more than they needed. They began to do a whole new thing. They began to trade their extra foodstuffs. They traded their with people in their own communities and also with people who lived in other areas. People began to practice, oh, this is awesome right here, specialization. Specialization or the development of different kinds of jobs. You weren't just a farmer or a hunter anymore. You could do something different because not everyone was needed for farming. Some people have the time to develop other types of skills. They made pottery from clay to store their grain and other foods. They used plant fibers to make mats and to weave cloth. These crafts people, like farmers, all Toso took part in trade. They exchanged the things they made for goods that they did not have and they could keep doing what they did and not farm. In late Neolithic times, people continued to make advances. Toolmakers created better farming tools, such as the sickle. It's an amazing lawnmower for cutting grain. In some places, people began to work with metals. At first, they used copper. They heated rocks to melt the copper inside and then poured it into molds for tools and weapons. Things were getting amazing. They weren't just rock tools. Now we have copper tools. Oh my gosh. All right, about... Make sure you get the right year here. About 4,000 BCE, craftspeople in Western Asia mixed copper and tin, not tin, tin, the metal tin, to form a whole new metal, bronze. Bronze was harder and longer lasting than copper, and it became widely used between 3,000 BCE and 1,200 BCE. The period then became known as the Bronze Age. And this is where we will end with the early humans. I hope you enjoyed it. All right. Go check out hornweebly.com and hornworldhistory.weebly.com and you can see this online. Thank you very much for participating. You guys are awesome. Woo, I'm out of here.